it recording? Yay, it's recording. All right, so welcome to Structural Analysis, everybody. Uh, hopefully, uh, you all had a, a good summer and you made it through, well, you did because you're here, made it through one of the most interesting years in academic history. Uh, but we are back and we are back in person, face to face. Even though we're all wearing masks, it is very exciting to see uh, folks in the classroom. So a lot of my colleagues last year, I mean, we, we obviously taught uh, most of our classes virtually, but some folks had freshman courses or labs or whatnot, but all of my classes were virtual, every one of them. So I had a, uh, a friend of mine, he's a, a colleague, he's a bridge engineer, he asked me how the semester was going. I said, well, I'm getting used to standing in a room by myself talking to myself, so that's probably not a good thing, but, um, but it is exciting to, uh, to have everybody back here. Um, so if you, just so everybody's aware, I'm Dr. Michelson. I'm going to be your instructor for the class. I think that I had a fair chunk of you for statics last fall. Is that correct? How many did I have for statics? That's crazy. And, and it was just, it's just an interesting experience. That was my first time teaching statics, but that was obviously, uh, different, <laughs> but, um, but I, I think it went pretty well. Um, one thing I want to mention right off the bat, uh, I am also teaching statics this semester, and I'm currently looking for TAs. I'm going to try and hire two TAs for statics, and those are paid positions if you're interested. I also have some money where I'm, I'm finishing up some research for the West Virginia Division of Highways, and I'm looking to, to hire a student for that. Possibly one of you, if you're very interested in that, I'd, I'd really like to, uh, 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 to talk to you about that because it, it's some pretty cool stuff. Um, I have here a note, don't forget to sign your return to campus agreement, but everybody in here has signed it, so that's, uh, that's null and void. Um, okay, uh, office hours. My office hours are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, 11 to 1, uh, and Tuesday, Thursday, 10 to noon. Um, to, I just wanted to have that on here. What we're going to do today is just set the stage for the class. We're going to uh, talk about how the class is going to operate. We'll talk about the syllabus, uh, some of the technology that we're going to be using throughout the semester. Uh, at, et cetera. Uh, and uh, I'll give you a little bit of a background on structural analysis because uh, you all are here, you're spending your tuition dollars sitting here in this room and beyond just needing to check off that box for degree work for graduation, I want you to understand you know, what you're doing in here, why you're taking this class. Because I mean, this is one of the core tenets of civil engineering and so I, I want you to kind of uh, understand that. Now, I'm gonna break the rule of uh, PowerPoint presentations by showing you my best slide, you know, proverbially first. Uh, so a little bit uh, about myself. Um, I uh, first off, I'll talk about the most important stuff on the slide. This is my family. That is my daughter Stephanie. Uh, she is getting ready to turn three in October. She's also in stage three of no. Stage one is hearing the word no and not liking it very much. Stage two is learning to say it back to us but she's in stage three. She enjoys to say no back to us. So, but uh, I, 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 she, she's great. She's my, my wife, Becky. Um, uh, a little bit about me. So I'm a faculty in the civil engineering department, but also I recently became the associate dean. I don't know if anybody ever had to deal with Dr. Wajudi. Dr. Wajudi was the associate dean. Now I'm the associate dean. So if you ever uh, need to uh, interact with the AD, that's me. Um, so because of that, my office moved. I'm now in 2103. That's the dean suite right upstairs, right above us. You know how there's that big office right there? I'm in there, so if you ever need me. Um, yes, I went to that school up north. I got my PhD at WVU in 2014. I am a registered uh, professional engineer in the state of West Virginia. I joined Marshall right after that. I've been here ever since. Um, I'm a, do you have a mask? Okay, all right, if you wouldn't. Thank you. Um, I, I think there's some in the Dean suite upstairs. Okay, okay. okay. all right, thank you. No problem. Okay, um, uh, I am a, a civil engineer, but my specific area of expertise is structural engineering. I'm a bridge guy, I, I, that's what I do. I design bridges, and particularly steel bridges. So uh, I could talk about that all day. In fact, speaking of, I am gonna talk about it a little bit. Um, specifically, what I do is I try and, um, a, a lot of my research is I really try and keep it as practical as possible. I try and ensure that, um, I mean, if you wanted to put uh, my research focus in a big nutshell, I am uh, trying to make bridge design more efficient, more economical, and, and more common sense. Uh, I focus a lot on short span bridges because if you 
took a, a statistical cross-section of the 600,000 some odd bridges in the United States, the vast majority of them are less than 140 feet in length. So that's what the taxpayers spend a lot of their money on. And so a lot of what I do is, is developing new types of systems for short span applications. One of the biggest ones that has monopolized my work for the past few years is the, is the use of a modular press break form tub girder. The idea is that you take a, a standard plate of steel, standard mill width plate, and you bend it into this U-shaped tub, cast a concrete deck on it, ship the whole thing to a site. We've had a, a number of installations. We have, we have had two in West Virginia, one of them in District 2 uh, near Eastland, your Ranger uh, in Lincoln County, and one of them in District 4 in Marion County. Um, there's been a whole host of them in Iowa and, and in the Midwest and whatnot. So it's a, it's a really starting to gain a, a lot of attention. So it's really exciting uh, for me as a researcher. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of work with the DOH. I do a lot of work with AISI. Um, I'm also uh, uh, have been uh, pretty active on the uh, professional side and on the service side. I'm a co-advisor with Dr. Na uh, for the SAME ASC student chapter. So if you're ever interested in that, you can come to either of us. Uh, and, and I won't belabor some of the other stuff because I want to get right into structural analysis. So let's talk about the class. Um, so. Uh, I'm going to do something a little different uh, this year. Uh, I'm going to include a project uh, this semester, but it's it's not really going to be the focus of, of what we do. Um, it, it's just going to be something I kind of want to tack on near the end. Um, just so everybody is aware, um, and I'm going to talk about this here in a bit, but I uh, just because we are sort of back to this face-to-face -face regular operation doesn't mean I'm not going to use uh, some of the technology tools that we uh, used last year to make our lives a little easier during the pandemic. And so what I'll tell you is every single thing that you see here on the screen is on Blackboard right now. Um, I'm also gonna show you how we'll do uh, notes on the board and with OneNote and, and, and some other tools. Uh, but uh, I'm all about making it as easy for y'all as I can without giving you your grades and whatnot, you do have to earn those. Um, but I am gonna uh, count attendance uh, for uh, a small portion of the grade. The biggest component of the grade is the homework. Um, and for those of you that had me for statics last uh, year where we did the daily homework assignments, we're gonna do that again in here. I'll admit when, um, when I taught statics, I thought that I was gonna get raked over the coals by the student evaluations at the end. Like, oh my God, Dr. Mike, why did you do that homework every day? But everybody that was in that class seemed to like it. Um, that in the end, it, it wasn't like it was a massive amount of work every day, but it was enough to keep you, you know, focused, keep your attention, and keep you uh, uh, motivated to come to class. And it seemed to work out. I was just taking the same amount of work and just spreading it out over the semester, and it seemed to work really well. So I'm going to do that in here as well. Also, have a like again, it's a very small project. It's not even going to be particularly difficult. It's just meant to uh, expand your critical thinking skills a little bit. Um, I don't even, I, I think the grades are probably going to be pretty high for it. I just want to see what you come up with, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. Um, the textbook, uh, Aslam Casamali Structural Analysis, 6th edition. Um, I don't care how you get it. You can get a digital copy. I think the bookstore has rentable digital copies for something like 30 bucks. So it's not, not that uh, particularly expensive. This is a civil engineering course, and so, you know, I get that um, as a civil engineering student, you might not necessarily want to, I don't know, uh, uh, purchase your political science book or your English book. This is civil engineering though, and this is part of your career. I would recommend that you get something permanent. Whether it's an e-copy or a physical copy is up to you. And again, it's a recommendation. As long as you're able to do the homework, you all are, are adults. You know, you can get it or not. It, it's okay with me. I'm not one of those guys, did you bring your book? No. Um, you, you, you all are adults. All right, let's talk about the operation of the class so that, um, so that you can understand like what I'm going to do. And it's all about trying to make it easier for you all uh, as students. One of the um, things I'll, I'll uh, I guess my, my philosophy for how I'm going to operate courses this year, I want to operate my classes sort of in the same way that I did when be before the pandemic. But the pandemic was definitely an arena where what's the, what's the phrase? It's like necessity is the fertile ground for innovation, right? So, um, you know, there were some technology tools and, and tips and whatnot that we had to learn to, uh, 
make our lives uh, to get through the pandemic. And some of those tools are actually really beneficial for you as students, and so I'm going to continue to adopt them uh, here. But I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, uh, the technology we're going to use uh, in the course. So be all end all, the primary tool that we're going to use is Blackboard. Okay? Blackboard is uh, going to be the uh, realm where all the grades are posted, all the lecture notes are posted. So all these slides are in PDF form on Blackboard right now. And I will do that for every slide this semester, period, full stop. So all the slides will be available on Blackboard. All the homeworks, I post homework solutions as well. For those of you that were in statics, you should remember that, that I would post a homework, we would grade it, and then you would get the solution. We would just keep that, that task. So you'll have all the solutions as well. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is actually conduct the exams via Blackboard, hence another reason why I'm thinking about trying to get a new room because this room's kind of packed. Um, the idea is that you could have your laptop and then do the problems by hand and then uh, submit everything there. That's my thought. I haven't totally um, committed to that in here. I know that in statics I'm gonna do that. I've got you know a lot of students in there, so we're gonna do our exams uh, via Blackboard in there. I'd like to do them in here as well, but um, I, I'm, I'm still not 100% on that. We'll see how this goes. It's largely gonna be uh, dependent on us getting a different room. I'm going to see about swapping with another course. Um, cam scanner. Cam scanner is going to be necessary. Um, if you had me for statics, you should probably remember using that. Um, but uh, first off, cam scanner is free. Uh, and, I, and to be clear, I don't care if you use cam scanner. You can use any app or whatnot that will scan a document. But basically, this is going to be how you uh, submit your homework. You're going to do it, take the picture, scan to PDF, upload. I actually recorded a little video last year on literally how to do that from step to step. So you ought to, you ought to watch that. It's Again, it's in the notes. Um, but it's pretty simple, uh, and you're not going to have to do that today, so there's no major rush on it. Um, teams. Okay, so uh, I'll be honest, I really don't see us using Teams all that much, but I might use it a little bit. Um, if I need to get a quick message out to the class, you know, hey, class is canceled today or something, uh, I might do that if for some reason uh, I know that, that uh, last spring, uh, if you remember, not only did we have a pandemic in virtual courses, but we had one of the craziest storms that this region has ever you know, experienced. And so um, I, uh, I lost power at my house for about an hour, or sorry, about, for about 24 hours, for about a day. So I used Teams just on my phone to say, guys, you know, don't worry about this homework assignment. We'll you know, turn it in whenever we can. You all just, you know, just be able to use it to, uh, quickly message the course. And so I do want to use Teams for that. It can also serve as a backup if, you know, again, we have a storm and there's a road out. I don't know. I just want to make sure that we have a team. Uh, the other uh, thing that I did use Teams for, which I will probably use this semester as well, is if you remember in statics, I would post these little videos to Teams where I did the exam breakdown, where I went through how the class did on the exam. Uh, I didn't want to take up too much time in class, you know, 15, 20 minutes in class talking about you know, all the grades to the exams when I can just post a little video if you're interested. Here's the class breakdown. You can watch it on your own time. We'll come back uh, uh, to class on Monday or whatnot. All right. One of the other, uh, really one of the big advantages to Teams is the OneNote that's available. So inside Microsoft Teams, if you go to the team for this class, okay, there is a, on the top bar, it'll say like, you know, grades and so on and so forth, and it'll say class notebook, okay? If you open that class notebook, um, you will be able to access all of the notes for this class. And so let me explain what that means. Um, so uh, this is what the notebook looks like for me. What you'll probably see is you'll probably see something like collaboration space. You might see your name and so on and so forth. And you should see something called content library. What content library is is basically the, re uh, the realm where I can put stuff, I can write stuff down, and you can view it, but you can't edit it, okay? And so what that means is any time I would proverbially write something on the board, it'll show up in this content library. So for example, if I go here and just write, I don't know, hello. All right. After that uploads and syncs, Every single student in this room will be able to go to the content library and see that. It might take a little bit to think, so it might not pop up now. 
but you should see these examples with the hinges and the frames and so on and so forth. So the idea is that any time I write something on the board, it is available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So if for some reason you miss something, oh, I didn't get that equation or I didn't get that formula, don't worry, it's here, you know? So I, that's something that, I, uh, that a lot of the students last year really liked was the ability to get the stuff on the board, you know, that it was accessible to them 24 seven. So I'm gonna continue to do that this year. So this is gonna be our blackboard. And so it'll store all the calculations that we do together all semester, okay? So far so good, any questions? Okay, all right, uh, let me go back to the presentation. Okay, so um, the other software packages, you know, make sure you browser, Microsoft Office, so on and so forth. I was gonna do the attendance now, I was gonna say break out your phones, and I was gonna pull up that QR code, but I just decided to do it before class. That seemed to work out pretty well, so we'll continue to do that. If there's, if for some reason it didn't work for you today, come let me know. I'm not gonna do, I've already decided that for this first day, I'm not gonna count anybody late, but if for some reason there's a technology issue, just let me know. Okay, attendance, or let's talk about the grade. So attendance, this is how I do attendance. Um, so if you're here and you're on time, you get a full point for the day. If you're late, that's half a point. If you're absent and you're unexcused for that absence, that's zero points. And so your attendance grades, just total number of points earned divided by total number of possible points, pretty simple. Attendance really isn't that big of a component of the grade, but um, you know, it, it uh, 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 it, it definitely it does matter. I mean, honestly, what matters most is that you're just here, engaged, and doing the work. And, and I have found that the students that are engaged, doing the work on time, they do well. That, that's just the, the be all end all. Now, when it comes to the lectures, like I said, I am going to try and uh, go back to my mode of operation pre-pandemic. And one of the things I did do pre-pandemic that I do plan to do now is record all of my lectures and post them to a course uh, YouTube playlist. I've been doing that for uh, four or five years now, and I still plan on doing that. So if you miss a lecture, it will be recorded. I have a lapel mic that I usually use, and of course, right before the semester, it decided to poop out on me. I brought my little uh, podcast microphone with me, so I hopefully don't have to use that anymore because I got one on order from Amazon. It's supposed to come in tomorrow. Um, so it's recording the lecture right now. Um, it might not be, uh, a, you know, we have class from 10 to 11. It might not be immediately available at 11.05. Like, give me a little bit to post it uh, there, uh, between now and the end of the day. But my goal is to keep that uh, YouTube playlist regularly updated. And there's, a, again, a link for the playlist on Blackboard. I'm going to pull Blackboard up here in a little bit. Okay, homework. Homework, uh, again, I'm going to try and keep up with that mode that I did in static. So I'm going to assign the homework during lecture. And it'll be due the following lecture. So... Uh, the way that'll work is usually it'll, like we meet from 10 to 11, the, black, uh, the homework will open at 11 a.m. after class, and it will close at 10 a.m. the following class, okay? So um, the, one of the things about the homework, and I think that it worked very well, is not only are the homework assignments not very long as a result, but um, if you miss one, it's not the end of the world, you know? There's so many of them that it's not that big of a deal if you don't do one, you know? Um, or if you get one late, so on and so forth. In terms of late, here's been my late policy. So if it's late, I assign a 20% late penalty, um, and I will take homework until they're graded. Because once they're graded, I put the solution up. And once the solution's up, then it's, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of too late then to take a homework where you already know what the answer is. But again, there's so many of them that uh, I've never really had too many of any, uh, any issues with that. I didn't have any issues really all last year with, with homework being a big deal. As long as you're doing them, you tend to do fine. In terms of the, uh, the format, um, basically follow you know, your typical engineering courses. You know, uh, in terms of the paper, I'd prefer that you either use quad paper or actually just letter, like copier paper, because if you're scanning it and submitting it, having like white paper with you know, black you know, writing or, or, or pencil writing creates a, a, a good contrast. So, as long as the handwriting is neat, um, make sure that you inclu include the name, the course, the homework, and the pagination at the top of the page. That might seem a little silly. Well, if I'm submitting it to Blackboard under the structural analysis you know, page, why do I need to put all that? 
Because if we're looking at a lot of homeworks, it helps to just have the, the reference there in case I, I download it for later. One thing I do want to emphasize is the need for a straight edge. Um, we're going to be drawing a lot of figures in here, a lot of trusses, shear diagrams, moment diagrams, stuff. A straight edge would be a good idea. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is my bone and boom, straight edge. You know what I mean? So it doesn't have to be anything uh, uh, massive. You don't need, you know, some scale or drafting triangle. Just something to make your, your figures neat, okay? So it doesn't, it's not that big of a deal. Um, any question on homework? Okay, all right, um, in terms of uh, exams, well, let, let me talk about the project. So um, there is gonna be an analysis project uh, in the class, and I'll tell you in general what it's about. What I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you lay out a pedestrian truss. If you wanna know what truss I'm gonna have you lay out, it might, you might not know this or not, but the upper floor of this building, I believe it's, it's either the second floor or the third floor, I'm, uh, I'm pretty sure it's the second, but the elevation of the second floor is actually matched with the elevation on the biotech building for a potential future pedestrian truss. So you're gonna lay out a truss that connects those two buildings, I'm gonna give you a load that the truss has to withstand, and you're gonna basically lay it out, ensure that the members um, don't experience too much load, make sure that the truss doesn't deflect too much, and compute how much it would cost. Draft it up in CAD, do a very little brief write-up on why you laid the truss out this way, et cetera, and so on and so forth. So it's not, keep in mind, I, I don't, once we get through some of the topics that we're uh, gonna discuss throughout the semester, I don't think this is gonna be a particularly long assignment, um, but it is gonna force you to open up CAD again. I know it might have been a while since you've opened up CAD or MicroStation or something like that, but I don't think it's gonna be particularly complex. All right, exams. Of course, we don't have exams in college. We have celebrations of learning. So we're gonna be celebrating three times this semester. Um, two of them are gonna be during the semester and one of them is gonna be during the final exam slot. My exams in this course are not intended to be comprehensive, okay? So exam two is not intended to cover, you know, what you needed from exam one. And exam three, you don't need to know exam one and two. But some of this course bleeds over, some of the material bleeds over from one exam to another. So, for example, if we're doing beams, you need to be able to compute support reactions in order to analyze a beam, and that's going to be covered on exam one. Even though it's not intended that, you know, you're focusing on that on that, um, on that, that uh, second exam, some of that material is going to bleed over. Um, when I do my exams, uh, I, I am... When I, and this is sort of general when it comes to my teaching philosophy. You know, I, I was in college for about 10 years between undergrad all the way to a PhD. And whenever I developed my teaching philosophy, I said, I'm gonna keep a list of everything that bugged the hell out of me when I was a student. And I said, I'm not gonna do that as a professor. And so one of the things that I didn't like when I was a student were time crunch exams. Exams that would take four hours to do and I'm gonna give you 50 minutes. I don't like doing that. I, I never felt that that was uh, an adequate test of your abilities. I don't, I didn't feel that then, I don't feel that now. Typically what I do is I use a rule of three, and what that means is if it takes me 20 minutes, it should take you an hour. So that, that's when, when I make an exam, I actually do the exam to you know, make sure that everything goes the way I wanted it to, and I time myself. And if it takes me too long, I'll cut stuff out of it. I've, I've, Use that method for years and it seems to work pretty well. So, um, so yeah. Any questions? Any questions at all? Okay. Why are you in here? Why are you taking this class? Um, first off, let me, uh, let me just make sure everybody's clear. There's no homework due today. So, or sorry, homework assigned today due Wednesday. You don't have any homework today, so don't, don't worry about that. Today's just, just informational. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Before we get into this, I wanted to pull up some of the stuff from the uh, syllabus and, and, uh, and Blackboard. Okay, so it's day one. Obviously, you've got to talk about the syllabus. Um, everything that I just went through in the presentation is obviously also covered in the syllabus, so you know, like my office hours and so on and so forth. Again, I'm gonna see if we can find a, a better room. Um, a couple things though that I did wanna mention on the syllabus are about the schedule. So how many of you have had 
uh, engineering courses already today. Okay, so I don't know if, um, if anybody mentioned this in some of your earlier classes, but we have a college retreat planned on September 17th, so you shouldn't have any engineering classes that day. Um, we're going to have an online lecture on September 17th, and, and that day I'm actually going to go through the project requirements. But the way that's going to work is a lot of the material that we'll be talking about before then will lead up to that, so it's, it's a pretty natural uh, lecture to go through that. You're going to have two project submittals. One's going to be very rough and preliminary, and then the one at the end is going to be a little bit more formal. Um, but I do want to... Um, highlight a couple of things about the schedule. So number one, uh, hold on, let me go here. So like for example, every time we have an exam, I have a day before the exam dedicated to just exam review. The way the exam reviews work is uh, I'll come in and for about five or 10 minutes talk about the format of the exam, how many questions you're gonna get, what it's you know, gonna cover, although you kinda already know what it's gonna cover right here. Um, and then we will, uh, I shut up and let you ask whatever you want. We can do example problems. We can go through, you know, uh, topics that you didn't understand. Floor is yours. Okay, you can ask me what the answer to number one is. I'm not going to tell you, but I mean, I want you to feel comfortable that you can ask whatever you want. And if there's, if, if I can answer it, I will. Um, the exam dates are probably going to be pretty set in stone. Um, I have the first exam set for Friday, September 24th, and the second exam set for Wednesday, October 27th. Um, I'll go ahead and tell you that I've, I've decided to arrange the class a little bit differently. Typically, um, what I would do in the past is I would do all of the forced stuff first and then the deflection stuff. Um, but what that would result in is we would do trusses and then we would do beams and frames. And then when we do deflections, we do trusses again, and then beams and, frame, beams and frames again. And I decided, let's just do all the truss stuff first. Then let's do all the beam and frame stuff together so that a lot of those topics sort of carry over. So I think that my uh, schedule that I have laid out is actually pretty conservative. I, I'm betting, I think we can finish some of these topics earlier than I say that we can. I think we're actually going to get some of this stuff done uh, a little bit earlier. But, you know, I wanted to be conservative when I built the schedule. Um, some of the uh, homework assignments um, uh, are going to bleed over for a couple days. So for ex instance, after exam two, we're going to use RESA 2D. It's a software program that's used to analyze structures. And it's going to take us a couple of days to, uh, uh, to go through everything. So I'm going to give you a homework on it and give you two lectures to finish it. So it's, it's not going to be just a, a, a single uh, lecture assignment. But it's when you start using RISA, you're going to see that RISA is very simple and very basic. Um, and RISA can also be used to supplement some of the work on your project if you want. So something to keep in mind. Uh, in terms of uh, some other stuff on the schedule, let's see. So as we start nearing the end of the semester and we start finishing our discussion on influence lines, on Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving break, I'm going to have a lecture dedicated sort of just to the project that's kind of for you because as you start wrapping stuff up you might have questions about well I, I wasn't Dr. Mike didn't quite figure this out could you help me out with that well you know that's sort of the troubleshooting Q&A uh, discussion the project the second submittal will be due Friday but um, again I think we're going to be ahead in terms of our topics so I have this listed as a makeup day and uh, assuming we don't need to use that lecture and you get your uh, project in, the Friday before break, we'll take off. If, unless you want to meet, we can talk about those differential equations that we love so much. Yeah, we can. I, I, I'm, I'm all for it. You know? I'm kidding. Any questions on the syllabus? All right. One final thing I did want to pull up is Blackboard. So here's the Blackboard course shell. Right now, there's not a lot here. Um, here's the syllabus. It's right there on PDF format. Um, if you go, if you click this link, it will take you to the YouTube playlist. There's nothing there right now because we're recording that video as we speak. Uh, as we, um, uh, as we uh, you know, go through the semester, we'll start building videos there. There's a folder here called Older Homework Assignments and Solutions. 
As we start completing homework, I will post the solutions in that folder. If you go into this folder, lecture notes and supplements, excuse me, come on. So you'll see here's the first lecture today. Um, we'll start adding topics to this. We'll start with classification of structures and then get into support reactions uh, and then trusses and so on and so forth. We'll start adding all of the, uh, the lecture notes here. I also uh, post lecture notes right before the exam. That's sort of in a nutshell, in a, you know, hey, here it is presentation. Here's all you need to know to assess the exam, okay? Um, so yeah, in terms of grades, I already have the um, grade columns figured out. So, you know, these will be running total. So if you were here today, I'm gonna post the attendance grade and it'll show you have 100 in your class because this is the only grade and you, know, you got 100. Um, but as we uh, grade stuff and as we progress, you know, you'll see stuff pop up. That's all I have right now other than getting back to the slides uh, on why you're in this class. Everybody good so far? Any questions? Yes, sir. Is the lecture notes on Blackboard going to be like the same lecture notes on the Zoom notes? No. No, that's a great question. So the notes that are on Blackboard are just the slides. Okay. What's going to be on Teams are the calculations that we do. So if it, um, you know, when we have like an example problem and I would do it on the board, the stuff in Teams is going to be what's on the board. It'll be the same notes without the writing. No, well, Teams will have the writing. Yeah. This will not. Okay. Yes. That's a good question. Yes, sir. Where do people find what they make free? Like what problem? It'll be on here. So okay. they'll be. So what'll happen is that's a great question. So what'll happen is. There'll be a, a thing that pops up that'll say, like, homework one, right? And it'll show up, you know, so I'll go ahead and tell you, your first homework assignment is going to be assigned Wednesday, okay? So you'll open up, and there'll be a PDF, and it'll say, do these problems. And you'll do them by hand, can scan it, upload it by Friday at 10, so. Yeah, and then it'll just keep doing that. There'll be another one that pops up. And then once that gets graded, what I do in that, older assignment is I'll make a post and it'll have the homework and the solution together. So that you have it all in one spot. I will go ahead and tell you, I was joking a little bit about the, uh, the differential equation stuff, but um, uh, the analogy I like to use is if you ever go to like a, um, a Hispanic restaurant and you look at the menu and there's the little chili pepper next to the, the item you know that's spicy. Well, if you look at that academic map that shows all the classes, there should be like a little C next to some of the classes, the ones that have calculus in it. Um, this class has a little bit of calculus in it, I'll tell you, like I'm, you know, just, just uh, forewarning you. But it's not anything that's particularly challenging. Um, what's the derivative of x squared with respect to that B? Okay, not bad, right? I, I'm, I'm, I'm being serious when I say it's really not that much more difficult than that. And in fact, a lot of the calculus that we are going to actually do here is definite integration that you can do on your calculator. Like integrals of x squared from zero to 10 that you can literally just plug into your Casio and it'll just spit out the answer. So it's not challenging, but there's a reason for it. We use it to determine how much beans to flex, okay? So, you know, if there's, let's take, take this room. There are support beams that are supporting the ceiling. We need to know how much they deflect and then size the beams accordingly, and that's what we use. So, so it's actually used. So, but we'll we'll um, we'll get to that as we go. And near the end of the semester, we'll talk about how to develop some analysis aids so you can avoid that calculus. But you gotta walk before you can run. So, any questions? All right. So. Let's get back to the class and talk about why the heck you're in here, okay? So, my little taskbar is still there, but that's okay. So why are you taking CE 312? Maybe the first thing to, a uh, to ask is, what is structural analysis, right? I mean, you're in this class, what are we even doing in here, okay? I could give you this, you know, long-winded, you know, Encyclopedia Britannica or Wikipedia definition, whatever you want to talk about. But basically, here's the deal with structural analysis. We as engineers design all sorts of systems, buildings, bridges, what have you. 
Okay, so let's take this building, okay? This building required a lot of engineers to make it happen, okay? There needed to be uh, geotechnical engineers to design the foundation to keep the building upright. There needed to be structural engineers. There needed to be mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, etc. What did the structural engineers do? Well, the structural engineers designed the beams, the columns, the frames, the connections to keep this structure upright so that it doesn't fall down and kill people. That, that's what the structural engineers did. So how does structural analysis fit into that? Uh, to that? Well, what is structural analysis? It is the process of determining all of those effects on the structure when the structure is subjected to load. So basically, structural analysis is trying to connect the forces and loads that you apply to a structure and its resulting response. That's structural analysis. So what do I mean by that? What are we talking about the, when I say effects? What am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about the support reactions, right? I have a bridge. It's 80 foot long. It's sitting on the abutments. I've got traffic on it. How much are the reactions at the end? That's something we talked about near the end of statics last year. So we got to know the support reactions. We have to know the internal forces inside the members. This building is comprised of beams and columns. How much is that column holding up behind that wall right there? How much shear and moment is inside the beams supporting this uh, floor load above us, et cetera? What about deformations, okay? How much is the structure deflecting? How much is the structure rotating? Um, all of those are going to want to be kept within desired tolerances. We have to know what they are, okay? Now, where do all these effects come from? They come from loads. They come from stuff we put on the structure, okay? What type of loads do structures have to withstand? Well, we, tend, we generally break them up into two categories. We look at gravity loads, we look at lateral loads. Gravity loads are the stuff that acts up and down with the direction of gravity. So, if we're talking about a building like this, what about the self-weight? This building is obviously not light as a feather. It's a pretty heavy building. It has to be able to hold itself up. Steel weighs 490 pounds per cubic foot. If I had a box of solid steel that big, it'd weigh 500 pounds, close to 500 pounds, right? Imagine how heavy the building is, right? That's a lot of weight, so it's got to be able to hold itself up. It also has to be able to hold up live load. So you might hear me use the term dead load and live load. Dead load tends to refer to permanent loads, loads that remain fixed. Live loads are transient, they move. What do you think the live load is in this room right now? Me, you, and you, the furniture. What the room is used for, sometimes we refer to live loads as occupancy loads. So the live load in a classroom might be different than the live load in a hotel, or a hospital, or an office building, etc. right? That matters too. Now there's gravity loads. There's also environmental loads. Um, rain, snow, and ice, that acts with the direction of gravity. But the two uh, lateral loads that structural engineers are primarily concerned with is wind, right? Wind acts left and right. Wind is one of the things that really makes structural engineering complicated. I can tell you that from a wind perspective, designing this building versus designing Smith would have been a little bit of a different challenge. The taller buildings get, the crazier the wind loads are. How many of you have ever been on top of the Empire State Building? Curious, has anybody been on top? Was it windy up there? Oh yeah. Wind loads are crazy. As buildings get taller, wind loads get higher. It goes, woo, goes up like that. So wind makes, that's what makes tall building design complicated. When it comes to gravity loads, Designing a beam on the second story is the same as designing a beam on the 82nd story because it's all just you know, the same floor loads, but the wind is what makes it weird. The other thing that makes uh, structural engineering weird uh, from a lateral perspective is seismicity, earthquakes. Um, and earthquakes are all about uh, uh, acceptable risk and your risk category and your possible accelerations in a given area. If you design a structure in Western Kentucky you have some pretty sizable uh, seismic hazard levels there. So you'd be surprised, you know, you're like, oh, we don't get earthquakes around here. Yeah, but not too far away, you know, there, there are some pretty serious uh, hazard risk levels. And as a structural engineer, you need to be able to design buildings anywhere, right? You work for a firm, they want that contract, they want money, right? And the answer can't be, well, we didn't, uh, I live in West Virginia, we didn't have to worry about that. Do you want that contract? Well, we'll worry about it, you know? 
So that's what structural analysis is. Who cares? Why do, we, why do we care about that? Well, the reason we care is design, okay? If I'm designing the beams on this bridge or the structure for this building, I cannot appropriately size those elements without understanding the forces that go onto it. If I have a steel tension member in a truss and it's got 100 kips on it, I need to know that 100 kips because if each of those A325 three quarter inch diameter bolts can withstand 8.7 kips per bolt, then that tells me how many bolts I need to put in that connection, right? I need to understand the bending moment in that reinforced concrete beam so that I understand how much reinforcement took place in it so that it doesn't fail, so that it doesn't deflect too much, et cetera. That's the whole point, okay? That's what we're doing in here. We're learning how to categorize and quantify those responses of the structure, how much the structure will deflect, how much force it's gonna experience so that we can then design that structure. That's the whole point, okay? That's why we're here. Where do we start? Well, we need some basic tools in order to assess the structure. And we really use three of them, okay? So the first thing that we need is equilibrium. I taught a lot of you about that last year, right? The two principles of equilibrium that a rigid body needs to uh, adhere to is that the sum of forces on that structure are zero and that the sum of moments are zero, right? So that the structure doesn't translate or rotate. That will be where we start. Next, we need constitutive relationships. This is the relationship on a material level between how much load you put on a system and how much it deforms. And so you're gonna get different constitutive properties for steel than you are for wood or concrete or aluminum or brass or et cetera. Now, we're not building many civil engineering structures out of you know, aluminum and brass. Steel and concrete are the primary materials that we use wood, you know, every now and then, at least when I say, when I say civil engineering structures, I'm not talking about houses, I'm talking about buildings and bridges and hotels, you know, many of those aren't, aren't built out of wood, I mean, but timber design is a thing. And last, uh, we need compatibility. The displacements have to be continuous uh, across the structure. You don't really need to get too far into that right now, because we're going to delve into that throughout the, um, uh, the semester, but for those of you that might remember your engineering 216 or mechanics and materials. This is how you went from force to stress, stress to strain, strain to displacement, so on and so forth. And if it's been a while since you had engineering 216 or, you know, you know it's like, oh man, I, that was a long time ago and that was virtual and uh, you know, it's okay, don't worry. Um, we use, uh, you know, enough of that class that we need. We're not gonna be doing any more circle or anything like that, don't worry. But uh, we will borrow from it from time to time. It won't be so bad. Now, um, before I end, uh, I do want to talk a little bit about our process as structural engineers because this is something that I have to impress sort of on day one. The, the title of this course is Structural Analysis. That's actually a little bit of a lie because we're not analyzing structures in here. We're analyzing mathematical models that represent structures. Now, you might go, oh, come on, Dr. Mike's splitting hairs on day one. No, no, this is actually kind of important, okay? Structures are, are really complicated, okay? They're really complex three-dimensional systems. They can exhibit dynamic behavior, nonlinear behavior. There's a lot going on here. What we as engineers have to do is we have to take, like, we're structural engineers. We're responsible for ensuring stuff like this stays upright. That's tough. That's complicated stuff, okay? So what we do as structural engineers is we develop mathematical models. So here, here's just sort of what I mean. This is a real life roof truss system, okay? This is some lines, some arrows, a triangle, and a little roller circle over here, okay? This is not that, but what this is is an analytical model. What we do is we attribute certain properties and certain behaviors to this to represent that as closely as possible. What we find in the research and the experimentation, I've talked about this all day, so this is part of what I do as a researcher, is we develop these models and we see how accurate are they. Pretty accurate. Um, 
I've actually gone in the field, tested trusses, and compared them to what we do in this class, and they showed up dead on. It was pretty slick, pretty neat. Um, but the idea is that we're not actually analyzing the structures, we're analyzing the models that represent them. And the reason why I'm splitting hairs about this is because I'm gonna show you the tools necessary to analyze structures, and then you're gonna get out of here, and you're gonna get a job for some bridge or some building, and you're gonna have to figure out how to analyze it. You're gonna have to figure out, okay, here's that connection from the beam to the column. Is that a simple connection, or is it a fixed connection? Well, what does it look like? And you're gonna need to take that real life framework and apply the model that makes sense. Because okay, there's no handbook for every single structure that you would ever analyze. We're not teaching you how to design bridges. We're teaching you how to design beams, columns, and connections because that's what bridges are comprised of. If you understand the components, you can design anything. Okay, But you applying that right model to that right system is probably the most complicated thing in structural engineering, period. If you can figure that out, you're most of the way there. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about like some real life instances. I might show you, I took some pictures of some of the beams in the, uh, the old engineering building. I can show you why if I was designing those beams, I would use a hinge or a roller and not a fixed connection. There are reasons for that. And we'll be able to go into that as the semester progresses. So, so yeah, I think this stuff's pretty cool, pretty exciting. Um, we're gonna be borrowing more off statics than we did off of structural analysis, but a couple things before we call it. What we do in here is very practical. I don't use any IJK in here, don't worry about that. Um, no, uh, very, very, very little uh, algebra-based answers. The answers in here will be you know, 62.3, not 2x root to the third or some weird thing. It's not going to be like that. It's very practical stuff. Every now and then we'll have some algebra base, but only when it makes sense. Only when it's when there's a reason for it. Okay. So I'm all about practicality. I like to say we take the methods in statics and make them simpler to handle more complex problems. That's the whole point. Any questions? All right. Before we leave, again, if anybody's interested in TA or RA stuff, stick around. I'd love to talk to you about it. Um, funding opportunities available. That's all I've got, everybody. I will see you all on Wednesday.